Welcome to the EAS Guide. My name is Mackie Hall, and recently I took a look at one of our world's most iconic logos, and I swear I could not figure out how to do those wavy lines. I dug through Illustrator, and I thought to myself, what the f***? Right, we're back on. All right, so I figured out how to do it. It's a function called zigzag, and it's buried under effects under distort and transform. All right, you can stop here and uh, go ahead and start playing in Illustrator if you want. So in this video, I'm going to dig in and explore this pretty cool and hidden feature. And in the process, I'm going to show you three different ways that you can use it to up your work. First, we're going to use zigzag to make a pretty radical background pattern. Second, we're going to use zigzag to make a circular pattern. And then third, we're going to take a break from our lines and go to a circular shape to make a radical floral pattern. All right, that's all I've got to say. Let's go. All right, there we go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Our new document will have a width of 1,000 points, a height of 1,000 points, and we're going to go with three artboards because we've got three things to teach. If we scroll down, you'll notice that we are using the RGB color mode. We're going for screen, not print. If you go on for print, CMYK all the way. Otherwise, let's go RGB. Let's create. All right, before we get started, let's go over a couple things. First is we're using the Essentials Classic Workspace. To switch on over to the Essentials Classic Workspace, all you need to do is go over to the top right hand corner here, click on Switch Workspace and select Essentials Classic. Next thing I wanna mention is we're using Smart Guides. It's always a good idea when you're building a file out or just learning a thing or two because you get exact measurements. How do you access Smart Guides? All you need to do is go to View, Smart Guides or select Control U. Next thing I want to mention is we're going to be using the bottom center of the page to highlight hotkey recommendations, key command recommendations, and tips and tricks. Along that line, we're building this piece on a PC. If you're using a Mac or Apple machine, use the command key instead. Again, command equals control. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and jump on over to our first artboard. All we need to do is select number one, and we are there. All right, now that we've got that done, Let's go ahead and introduce the zigzag effect. How are we going to do it? Let's set up our file first. First thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab the rectangle tool. We're going to hover over the top left hand corner of our page. We'll click and drag down to the bottom right hand corner of our page right there. We're going to set our background. Once done, let's go ahead and make our stroke transparent. We'll double click on our fill and let's go with a light blue. I think that looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now that we've got that done, let's lock that layer in place. How are we going to do that? All we need to do is go Object, Lock, Selection. All right, now that we've got our background all locked and sorted, let's go ahead and grab our pen tool and let's draw ourselves a line segment. And once we've got our pen tool, all we need to do is go to the top left-hand corner of our artboard, just off the artboard, as a matter of fact. We'll click and release, and then we're going to go straight down to the bottom of our artboard. We're going to hold our shift key to make sure it's a vertical pull. We'll click and release. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool and let's go ahead and play with our line segment. First thing we're going to do is we're going to trade our stroke and fill so that our fill is transparent and we've got color on our stroke. Next thing we're going to do is we'll double click on our stroke. And we're going to change that color. Let's make it just a little bit darker. Click right there. That looks pretty good. Let's click OK. And now what we're going to do is we're going to thicken up our stroke. The way we do that, we can go over here to the right side if we've got Essentials Classic open. We can also open up our stroke window by clicking on our stroke icon right here. That'll do it. If you don't see either of them, no problem. All you need to do is go to Window, Stroke, or Control F10. Let's click on that. Once we've got that, let's go ahead and change the weight from 1 points to 12 points. There we go, that's a little bit better. Let's go ahead and talk about the zigzag effect and how it works. If you haven't already, let's go ahead and bring our entire first artboard into view. The way we do that, let's hit Control Zero, and that centers our artboard right on screen. Next thing we're going to do is let's go up to Effect, select Distort and Transform, and let's select Zigzag from that menu. And once that window opens up, take a look at your options. The default size is 10 points. We can change that by clicking and dragging the size right here. Or of course, we can just enter in the size right there. Let's write 10 to get it back there and let's tab off of it. You'll notice we've got the preview on. 
so that we can see the changes on screen. Next thing we see is relative and absolute. Relative is percentage, and you can see it defaults to 10%. You can increase or decrease that as you see fit. Let's take that back down to 10%, and let's move back to absolute. Next is ridges per segment. You can click and drag your ridges per segment as high as you want to get the zigs and the zags how you want. In this case, let's change our ridges from the default or whatever we've dragged it to, to 12. Let's tab off it once again. That's pretty good right there. Next thing is where the wavy line gets its magic. Notice that under points, we've got smooth and corner. The default is corner. Let's change our points to smooth. Let's click on that. And there you go, you can see it right there. That being said, we like our ridges per segment and we obviously like the smooth points. However, let's increase the size from 10. Let's take it up to about 14, see what that looks like. Looks good for me. Let's go ahead and click OK. And there you go, we've got that wavy line that we desired. All right, now that we've got that done, Notice that we've got a line segment with effects on it. We don't need the effect anymore because we've got the wavy line. So let's get rid of it and move to just a wavy line shape. How do we do that? All we need to do is go to Object, Expand Appearance, and there we go. Notice that the effect is gone and now we've got a wavy shape. All right, now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and create our background. Here's how we're going to do it. With our segment still selected, we're going to go Edit, Copy, or Control-C, and then go edit, paste in front, or control F. Once we've got that, let's hold our shift key down and let's arrow to the right of our artboard. It doesn't matter how far over we go, we're going to mask out anything that moves beyond the artboard. Okay, now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and use the blend tool to create that background pattern that we want. Let's go ahead and click on our blend tool, and then let's hover right underneath the top right shape and let's click on the top anchor point. And then let's go over to our top left shape and let's do the same thing. Let's click on the anchor point. There you go, we've got that background pattern that we're looking for. However, let's adjust it a little bit. How are we gonna do that? Let's go ahead and double click our blend tool. And once that window pops up, let's go ahead and change our spacing from smooth color to specified steps. Once we've got that, you'll notice that it's got 27 specified steps. Let's go ahead and increase it until we're happy with the spacing. That looks pretty good right there. Let's go ahead and click OK. And let's go ahead and mask any of the extra out. How are we going to do that? Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's click off of it. And then let's grab our rectangle tool. Again, we're going to hover over that top left-hand corner. Let's click and drag down to the bottom right hand corner, just like that. It doesn't matter what the shape has got or what color or what stroke or fill, because we're only going to be using it as a mask shape. Next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's click and drag over everything in that artboard. And then let's go up to object, clipping mask, and select make. Let's go ahead and deselect. And there you go, we've got that cool wavy background pattern. Let's go ahead and close our stroke window. And let's go ahead and move to our second artboard to create that round pattern that we were talking about. Under artboard, let's click and go to number two. All right, now that we've got that, let's go ahead and jump right in. Once again, let's go ahead and grab our pen tool. And let's hover somewhere around the middle of our artboard. That looks good right there. Let's click and release. Let's hold our shift key to get a perfectly vertical drag. And let's make our line segment approximately 300 points. We'll click and release. And now let's go ahead and go back to our default settings. Again, in this case, we're going to have a white fill and a black stroke. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. And then let's increase our stroke thickness from 1 to 60. That looks pretty good right there. However, that's not the kind of stroke we're looking for, so let's adjust it a little bit. Let's go back to Window, Stroke, or Control F10. Once we've opened up that window, let's go to the bottom of our window and select Profile. We'll click and release, and then let's hover down to Width Profile number four. There you go, it's the wedge. We'll click and release. Now let's turn that wedge in the opposite direction. All we need to do is hover over Flip Along, and let's click on that. It's exactly what we want. Now let's go ahead and play with zigzag. 
Once again, we're going to go Effect, Distort and Transform, and let's select Zigzag. Notice that once again, we go back to our default settings. That's perfectly fine, but let's just adjust it a little bit. Let's change our ridges per segment from four to two. Let's tap down. And then let's change our points from corner to smooth. It's exactly what we're looking for right there. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now that we've got our effect done, let's go ahead and lock it in by expanding it. Again, we'll go Object, Expand Appearance, and there you go, that's close to what we're looking for. Okay, now that we've got this, let's go ahead and make that round pattern. How are we going to do it? Let's go ahead and select our Rotate tool, and right away, you'll notice at the center of our piece is the Rotate axis. Let's go ahead and move that. The way we do that is we're going to press our Alt key. Let's click and drag that down to the anchor point at the bottom. We'll release, and our Rotate window will pop up. Here's what we're going to do. I want 16 points around a circle on this one. So how do I do that? I'm going to write in 360 divided by 16. Next thing we're going to do is we'll select copy. How do we duplicate that movement around our circle? Well, it's a piece of cake actually. And this is a bit of a hidden piece. All we need to do is hit control D, that's duplicate, as many times as we need to, to get back full circle. Let's go ahead and do it. Go ahead and grab our selection tool. Click anywhere on our artboard to deselect. Piece of cake to create our circular pattern. Now, if we wanna lock all our individual shapes together, that's piece of cake too. All we need to do is drag across our shapes. Let's go to Window, Pathfinder. Once that opens up, let's select Unite. There we go, we've got one single united shape. We can deselect to get a better look. And let's go ahead and change the color to see what it looks like at a different color. All we need to do is select it. Let's double click on our fill. And let's go to an orange. That looks pretty good right there. Let's click anywhere there. Click OK. Deselect our shape. Got a nice, simple, round pattern thanks to the zigzag tool. Let's do one more. This time around, let's go ahead and move to our third artboard. All right, this time around, we're going to do something different. With our last two pieces, we used a single stroke. This time around, we're going to use a shape. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take an ellipse and convert it into an organic flower. Here's how we're going to do it. Let's go ahead and click and hold our rectangle tool and let's select our ellipse tool. Now that we're done with that, let's click anywhere on our artboard and let's create an ellipse that's 200 points wide by 200 points tall. Click OK. And let's go ahead and go back to our default color set. Again, that's a white fill and a black stroke. That looks fine right there. Let's go ahead and center our shape horizontally and vertically on our artboard. Piece of cake on how to do that. All you need to do is go to align right on your top bar if it's visible. Otherwise, to open the align window to do that, all you need to do is go to window, align, or shift F7. I'm gonna use my top bar instead. I'll click here. Let's align horizontally and vertically just like that. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. And let's go ahead and deselect our shape. Notice that all we've got is a simple basic circle right here. Well, that's gonna change right now, again, thanks to the zigzag tool. Let's select our piece. And let's go again, back to effect. Let's go distort and transform and let's select zigzag. Now notice right away what happens with the default settings on zigzag is we've got a star. This is one way to build a star, but this is probably the least efficient since we've got the star shape that we can really manage just by using that tool. Instead, what we're going to do is we're gonna play with this in a different way. Instead, we're going to go back to the waves. First things first, let's go ahead and change our points to smooth, and then let's change the ridges per segment from four to six. Tab off of that. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna take our size and let's go ahead and drag it up until we've got a floral shape. Check it out. Eighty points will do. Let's go ahead and click off of our shape. Let's go ahead and click OK. And with our shape selected, let's go ahead and change some of the colors. First thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and make our stroke transparent. And let's double click on our fill 
And let's go ahead and make our fill green in this instance right here. Looks pretty good right there. Let's click OK. Now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and use Rotate and change some colors to go ahead and complete our flower. Let's go ahead and double click on our Rotate tool. Once our window comes up, let's go ahead and select a rotation of 360 divided by 40. Let's select Copy. And you can already see our flower coming into view. Let's go ahead and see if we can make a little field flower here. So let's double click on our fill and let's go to a yellow. Looks good right there. Let's go with a semi deep yellow. We'll go about right there. That looks pretty decent. Let's click OK. Remember how we used duplicate in our last step? Well, let's try it again. Let's hit Control D again. That's going to duplicate our move of 360 degrees by 40. Let's hit duplicate one more time. There you go. Let's go ahead and change our color. Let's double click on our yellow and let's go halfway up to full yellow. It looks pretty good right there. Let's click OK. Starting to work. Let's do it one more time. Let's hit Control D one more time. And note that it is not perfect. That's OK because we're going for an organic look. Let's double click on our yellow one more time. Let's take it all the way up to a full yellow, about like that. That looks good. Click OK. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect and check out what we've got. We've got a pretty cool look there. All we need to do is finish it out by completing the middle. When we do that, let's go ahead and grab our ellipse tool. Let's hover over the center of our shape. Let's click. Let's hold our shift key and our alt key to make it symmetrical and expand from center. Let's make it about that big right there. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and double click our fill and let's take it to like an off white, maybe just about there. Let's have a little bit of yellow in it. Looks pretty good. Let's click OK. Looks good. Let's go ahead and zoom in on our flower, see what that looks like. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and add one more circle. The way we do that, let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's click off our original circle and then let's go ahead and grab our circle one more time. Let's hover back to the middle. Let's click and drag out. Again, we'll hold our Shift and our Alt key simultaneously until we get to the width that we're looking for. That looks pretty good right there. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead and change the color. Let's double click on our fill. Let's make our fill just a little bit wider. That looks pretty good right there. Let's click OK. And that looks pretty good. However, let's make it just a hair more organic. How are we going to do that? Of course, we're going to use the zigzag tool. So let's go to Effect, Distort and Transform, select Zigzag. And now let's do a mellow wave. Again, we're going to change our points from corner to smooth. Let's change our ridges per segment from four. Let's take it down to like two. We don't need too much here. We'll tab off of that. And then let's change our size from 10. Let's go ahead and take it down to one. We want this effect to be subtle, just to mimic an organic look. Let's tab off of that. Looks pretty good right there. Let's click OK. Let's go ahead and grab our selection tool. Let's deselect our shape. You can see what we've got right there. That looks pretty good. Let's bring our entire page into view and let's go ahead and finish this out. All we need to do is with our selection tool still selected, let's click and drag across our shape. Let's right click on our shape and let's select group. Let's go ahead and deselect. We can try this a couple more times, but beyond that, heck yeah, we are done. Nice job. I hope you upped your game just a little bit. Now for me, I took that shape and built my own. Now does it match that logo? No, it does not, but I learned a ton along the way. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, throw me a like. I'd really appreciate that. Otherwise, subscribe. I'd appreciate that a little bit more. We'll see you next time. Peace.